First at four, a nasty storm in Novi. We'll show you some of the damage, and one resident describes how frightened she was. Hours later, we're seeing sunshine, and there's better news in the forecast. It's hot now, but we're about to get a little more comfortable. We're also monitoring today's January 6th hearing. Today's topic, the pressure on former Vice President Mike Pence and what legal experts say about the idea he could have reversed the election. And here's Paula. Michigan Works, a government agency which helps people find and train for good jobs, says a new government proposal is the worst news they've ever gotten. I'll explain why. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at four, folks around the Novi Town Center have been cleaning up all afternoon after a nasty storm rolled through. Our crews were on the scene for the aftermath. Several trees were knocked down and power lines toppled onto the ground. Area is seeing localized power outages and road closures as well. Residents say the storm was pretty scary and we heard from one woman who ran to the basement. And before we knew it, we heard daddy say down to the basement and the siren didn't even go off. It just I mean, it was literally, it sounded like glass was breaking, so we weren't sure if it was windows or what it was. What and was it, you know? It was our trash cans, actually, with the recyclables and, and all that, but it was enough to scare the ever-living out of us, so. <laughs> Crews were on the scene quickly to start the cleanup and working to restore power. So if you need to head to that area, you might want to call ahead to see if the power's back and you can do what you need to do. We will have a live update on Local 4 News at 5. Well, we have seen some wild weather in the past 24 hours from intense heat to that nasty storm. Right now we're going to welcome a new member of our local four weather team, meteorologist Brian Sherman. And Brian, where do things stand right now? Well, thank you so much, Karen. Glad to be here with you this afternoon. A much different picture than we had earlier this morning. Storm Tracker 4, a clean sweep all across southeastern Michigan. Plenty of sunshine, Mount Clemens, a little bit of high cloud cover outside as we've worked here into the afternoon. But we've really started to heat up with that sunshine 90 degrees over in Mount Clemens and still a little breezy with that west southwest wind at about 13 miles an hour 93 right now city airport 90 over in Pontiac 88 in Flint as well as over in Howell and the sunshine will give way to clear skies as we head throughout the evening hours tonight 80s by 6 and 8 o'clock this evening and even dropping into the 70s by the time we get to midnight tonight refreshing changes are on the way as we head into the weekend but we've got another heat wave on the way we're back into the 90s by the middle of next week Details in your full forecast coming up in just a few minutes, Karen. All right. Thank you very much, Brian. Welcome to the team. Thank you. All right. On Capitol Hill, the committee investigating the January 6th attack on Congress is moving forward with a series of public hearings. Today's edition focused on the role of former Vice President Mike Pence in the events leading up to and on January 6th. Kimberly Gill has been sorting through some of that presentation. Now, Kim, the committee says the former VP was under intense pressure. That's right, Karen, that's what they say. Good afternoon to you. Uh, Pence was being pressured in both public and private to do something no vice president had ever done before. His former boss, former President Donald Trump, of course, wanted Pence to reject the electoral count that showed Joe Biden winning the 2020 election. The committee chair says nothing else had worked and Trump wanted Pence to come to the rescue. This theory that the vice president could unilaterally select the president runs completely contrary to our Constitution, our laws, and the en entirety of our American experience. But that didn't stop. Uh, didn't matter to President Trump. Thank you, Mr. Hager. Today, the committee revealed the campaign to pressure Pence to undo the election took place without any legal precedent. Witnesses say former President Trump latched on to the theories of conservative law professor, professor John Eastman, who believed Pence could indeed change the outcome of the election. A former Trump White House attorney described his response to that idea before January 6th. I said, you're completely crazy. I said, you're going to turn around and tell 78 plus million people in this country that your theory is this is how you're going to invalidate their votes? because you think the election was stolen. And I said, they're not going to tolerate that. I said, you're going to cause riots in the streets. And he said, words to the effect of, there's been violence in the history of our country, Eric, to protect the democracy or protect the republic. 
and there is much more testimony to go through. We'll have a new report from Washington when you join us for Local 4 News at 5. And Karen, one more thing before I go. I wanted to note that uh, the House Committee is now saying it also wants to hear from Virginia Thomas. She is the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. She's come up in their investigation, and Chairman Benny Thompson says it's time for her to come talk to, to the committee. So we'll keep you posted on that for now. Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right, we appreciate it. Thank you, Kim. Sure. Many world leaders continue to show their support for Ukraine as the Russian invasion continues. Today, the leaders of France, Germany, Italy, and Romania made a high-profile visit to Kyiv. Their visit comes after they were criticized for not coming soon. They toured the ruins of the suburb that was the scene of the intense fighting in the early states of the war. French President Emmanuel Macron denounced the massacres and said there are signs of war crimes. Ukraine says it needs more weapons from its Western allies as the Russians are steadily gaining ground in the Donbas region. Also today, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin was in Brussels speaking with NATO allies about bolstering troops along Russian borders to stop further aggression. The families of two American veterans say they haven't heard from their loved ones since June 8th. The State Department says it is monitoring the reports but can't comment because of privacy concerns. A Michigan plant that makes baby formula is trying to get over another setback so it can help alleviate that national shortage we're all experiencing. The Abbott plant in Sturgis has stopped production shortly after reopening. Severe storms in western Michigan flooded inside the plant, which now needs to be repaired and re-sanitized. You probably recall the Abbott plant was closed for months over concerns about bacteria. This new situation could stop production for a few more weeks. The FDA says it will visit the plant again to make sure it is ready to produce safe and quality baby formulas. A proposed change in the way the government does business with workforce development agencies could cost the state of Michigan thousands of jobs. Administrators for the Michigan Works Agency are sounding the alarm. Paula Topman joins us live from Pontiac at a small business that says it could be affected by the change. Tell us more, Paula. Yeah, hi, Karen. Hi, everybody. So administrators for Michigan Works, this is how they explain it. They say that if this restructuring goes through, it'll be more difficult for employers like Dave right here to find talent and for talent to find training to get work. This is bad news. In my 24 years in workforce development in Oakland County and across the state, this is the biggest threat that the workforce system and the Michigan work system has ever faced. The proposed wagner Pizer Act change in plain English means the federal government wants to change how certain workforce development agencies are funded, taking local control away and consolidating that control at the state level. On the street level, what that means is agencies like Michigan Works will be forced to change how they support workers and companies that have depended on them for nearly 50 years. So this proposed rule would require services to be delivered at the state level rather than the local level, which would seriously impact the staffing levels across the state of Michigan. So not only would the people who help people find and train for skilled labor jobs lose their jobs, but with the staff and program reductions, fewer people will have access for job searches and training. That transition would reduce us from 400 Michigan work staff down to 90 state staff to deliver the same level of services. So Barron Industries in Oxford, for instance, has 70 employees working in the aerospace industry. I'm afraid I don't know what will happen. If this funding shift does happen, it means those programs and employees coming through the local Michigan Works pipeline disappear. A lot of these employees start at entry level jobs, but then Michigan Works helps us train them into machinists, into welders, into NTT testers, <coughs> non-destructive testing, into quality positions. And without that assistance, Barron Industries may not be able to afford to do that on their own. At Siblings in Pontiac, the name of the game is 3D printing. Eight employees service 300 different companies with a variety of products. One of those commercial printers, by the way, came through a Michigan Works grant, which not only helps supply the machinery, but the workers and the training. I have serious and significant concerns that if the Wagner Pfizer funding for Michigan Works goes away, I will lose my ability to attract and retain and train employees through the services of their organization. And not only am I concerned about my company benefiting from those types of training initiatives, but also the customers that I work with on a daily basis. 
Okay, so I did reach out to the Department of Labor to find out what is triggering the restructuring, and they actually got back to me pretty quickly, but with a public release statement, and they explained that this move is designed to improve processing and other services, but it is also encouraging public comment because they want the public to weigh in on how their tax dollars are spent. But Karen, that period ends on Tuesday. And of course, because it's a government entity, a link to find a way to make a public comment is difficult to find. We're gonna make it easy for you. We're gonna put a link on, of course, this platform, click on Detroit.com, as well as our other social media platforms so that the public can actually fill out a form, weigh in and say, hey, I think this is a good idea to consolidate or no, I don't think this is a good idea. I'd rather you keep it the way things have been since 1933. Karen, after 1933 and then restructured in 1998, but you get my point. Yeah, I do get your point on that. All right, thank you very much, Paulo, as always. We appreciate it.